Good afternoon. This is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. All right, we're going to do Andrew Murray's um, second book that's in this book that I didn't even realize, and it's called Baptism of Fire by Andrew Murray, Chapter 1. The fire and the blessing it brings, and there came forth fire for the Lord at the dedication of the tabernacle and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering Leviticus chapter 9 verse 24 and David built there on Moriah an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and called upon the Lord and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar then David said this is the house of the Lord God first chronicles chapter 21 verse 26 and then chapter 22, verse 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed burnt offering, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. And Elijah said, God that answereth the fire, let him be God. And the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood the stones and the dust and licked up water that was in trench. First Kings chapter 18 verses 24 through 38. Just those four times we read of heaven being opened and fire descending upon sacrifices laid upon the altar before the Lord as a token of his acceptance of the sacrifice and his approval of the worshipers as the answer to their prayers as the power by which the dead offering was transformed into bright living flames rising heavenward it made man fall down and worship before the lord to any of the hearers of john the baptist wondering what the baptism of fire might be looking to the old testament for some clue in the meeting there was nothing so likely to suggest itself as the thought of the burnt offering on the altar baptized terminated with fire from god in heaven wholly possessed and consumed, and by it carried heavenwards. But we live in the full light of the fulfillment, the fulfillment of John's proclamation. The study of the type will make clear to us some of the most precious lessons we need to learn. Let us look first at the wonderful blessings this fire from heaven on the altar brought. It was a sign of of immediate con communication between earth and heaven, a direct revelation of the presence and favor of God. In every sacrifice, even when the fire for it has to be made here on earth, there is a communion with God. But in the four instances, cited God that special need with the special token of his favor and the special manifestation of himself as the God whom they were seeking. Hence we read of the dedication of the tabernacle, and when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. When the fire fell on Moriah to consume David's sacrifice, he knew that this was to be the place for the house of the Lord. The fire was the sign that God had come to dwell there. Of the dedication of the temple, when the fire had come down, we read, The glory of the Lord filled the house, and the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground and worshipped, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And on Mount Carmel, the fire of the Lord fell, and all the people saw it. They fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. In each case, the baptism of fire brought the direct, overwhelming proof of the presence and glory of God. And every time they might doubt or fear or forget, the fire from heaven was the irresistible evidence that God was there. And is not... Thus this, the need of our Christianity in these, in these our days, the presence of God truly revealed and felt. It, and is it not just this for which the baptism of fire was promised and is so indispensable? In John's baptism, there were indeed tokens of God's presence and power. He could testify that God had sent him. He could hold forth the wonderful promises of the kingdom of heaven. 
he could with convic- convincing power, preach repentance and forgiveness. He could point to Jesus on whom he had seen the Holy Spirit come down and abide, and who would be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. But more he could not do. He had been filled with the Spirit from his mother's womb, and there was a measure of Spirit's power in his preaching. With all this, the baptism of fire he could not give. Even Christ himself could not give it until, as a victim on the altar, he himself had been consumed by the fire, and in that fire had been lifted up as a glorified one into heaven. When the baptism of fire came, was not its chief work the perfect, oops, the perfect unsightedness that the fire had come from above, that it was God's fire renewing and filling the whole being with his presence? Without appealing to promise or reflection or argument, you knew and felt, this is God, this is God's spirit filling us. Thus this is many, oh, I'm sorry, thus this is what many are longing for. The preaching of the gospel is not without blessing and fruit. Operations of the spirit are not unknown. They hardly reach much beyond the power of the water baptism. There is true repentance and the joy of forgiveness, even as at Philip's preaching in Samaria, there is something lacking. People remind themselves or have to be reminded, as Paul did the Corinthians, they have the Spirit. The joyful assurance of Pentecost, I have received the Holy Spirit direct from the Lord in heaven. The fire of God and accepted and is consuming the sacrifice. The fire of heaven in my heart is the direct proof of God's presence in me. This is all too little known. The baptism of fire is God's direct revelation of himself and taking hold and transforming the offered sacrifice for himself. The fire is the revelation of the holiness and glory of God taking possession of his temple. It will teach us to know the Holy Spirit as dwelling in us and keeping the divine life in us as simply and as naturally as we know that we are alive with life nature. You cry, oh, to be thus baptized with the fire of God. To have the fire of heaven with its refreshing, quickening, God-revealing, and God-glorifying power that possess me all the day. You long to know how to attain this wonderful blessing. The baptism of fire on the burnt offering on the altar gives the answer. At the dedication to the tabernacle, Moses had said, Leviticus 9.6, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. The tabernacle had all been made as the Lord commanded. The sacrifices were prepared according to God's will. The whole burnt offering was on the altar in token of entire consecration. All was surrendered. Fire came to claim and accept all. It was even so with David. When the burnt offering was prepared, he called upon the Lord fire came to consume the sacrifice that was God's answer to the prayer. Solomon too, when he had an end of praying, the fire came from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings. It is ever the same. The fire demands a sacrifice. It must have its flood. Fire came from heaven. Only comes where everything on earth is prepared to yield to its all-consuming power. It is a heart most completely, utterly given up to God that can accept baptism of fire. See with what force this comes out in the case of the sacrifice of Elijah on Carmel. Notice first the prophet's entire isolation and separation from all around. I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. Baal's prophets are 450. If you would have God answer you by fire, you must begin by entire and intense separation from all the worldly and half-hearted religion that surrounds you. You must come out as a man who stands up for God and see how the he built an altar in the name of the Lord, his worship and his sacrifice, God, his will and his glory is to be all. Mark how he had the altar and the sacrifice surrounded with water. His faith trusts God to manifest his mighty power. He counts upon the fire to overcome the greatness, greatest hindrances. Listen to him pleading with God, not for himself, for God's honor and for the dedicated 
on the deluded and for the deluded people. He calls for the fire that God may be known and the people brought back to his fear and service. Study all this and you will understand as you read. And the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust like the water was in the trench. When everything is done, as where Elijah prepared his sacrifice, the baptism of fire will surely come. O oh, Christian friends, the unspeakable blessing of the Pentecostal fire baptism is ours if we will but come to receive it in God's way. All these four witnesses teach us just one lesson. It is where everything is prepared to give God alone the honor. Where everything is ordered, an entire surrender to his demand, where the whole burnt offering on the altar has been taken as a type of the absolute surrender of our life, the death of God's Holy Spirit to receive it, consume it in his service. There the baptism of fire is sure to come. We have seen David, and Solomon, and Elijah all praying and calling upon God to reveal himself. Power would not have been heard if the whole burnt offering had not been there waiting to be consumed. The fire from heaven is to turn the life of earth through death into the worship and service of God. Do let us believe that the spirit and fire from heaven which John proclaimed are meant to make and keep us living sacrifices as our whole life through every day and every moment can have the fire of God burning through our whole being in all its power through our very bodies, making them living, holy, and well-pleasing sacrifices. It can be, it has been, it will be, to everyone who is ready to give up all, to count all things but loss, to hate, and to lose his life, that Christ may live in him. Christ took his disciples and prepared them for the fire baptism training them three years in the following of his steps and the fellowship of his surrender to the Father. He clung to him as men who sought nothing but him alone, and it could not be that he filled them with his Spirit. The path to the blessing lies clear and open before us. The whole burnt offering receives the baptism of fire. First the death, then the transfiguration the fire brings. It was so with Christ. It must be so with us. Are you ready for this? Possibly you feel as if you are not willing to give up all, or as if, though you are willing, do not know how it is to be done, what all it requires, whether you will have the power to fulfill it faithfully. If you share, I have a word of unspeakable comfort. God not only sent the fire from above, he ordained his servants to prepare the sacrifice, Aaron the priest, David the king, Elijah the prophet, laid the burnt offering on the altar in his name. Christ not only baptized with the fire, he prepares the sacrifice. In Christ we not only find out all that God is to be to us, we find him that we are to be God. He is our high priest to bring us God. Before he gave his disciples the promised baptism of fire, he prepared them for it. Yield yourself to your Redeemer in the confident assurance that he will make me partake of the Spirit and the power of his death. Befits you then the absolute surrender he asked. Yield yourself in the faith the baptism of fire is for you. Wait on your ascended Lord and the high priest work both in you and bless preparation of the sacrifice, more blessed fulfillment of the promise, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Go out today and each day as one set apart and accept, expecting and receiving the fullness of the Spirit of God. Right now I'm in awe. I just got to tell you why. I've been listening and join partnership with revelations of Jesus Christ. His name is Wally, and his wife's name is Lioness. I just listened to a teaching of his about this, and I'm amazed 
I'm amazed. I want to lay it all down. I want to sacrifice all and give it to him. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but he is my life. And I don't know what I'm holding back. But I know I've got to seek him more earnestly than I've ever done. We need his Holy Spirit. We need to be baptized in the fire in order to be able to withstand his coming upon this earth. I love you all so very dearly. Keep your eyes on Jesus, brothers and sisters. Who knows in the book, which is the word of God. Embed the word of God on the tablets of your hearts so you will not sin against God be deceived. Until next time, bye-bye.